morning. Good morning. Welcome to Barnesville Baptist Church. You here and you out there in virtual land. It's good to be in God's house this morning. Our announcements, don't forget the 11th of December be our Christmas dinner and uh, you sign up in the back please because they ne we need to know who's coming or how many. And Thanksgiving is this uh, Wednesday we'll be meeting here for Thanksgiving Eve service. It won't be too long. Come and enjoy the fellowship and the worship. And the food shed will be open on the 25th at 9 o'clock. And our sister Margie Streams is celebrating on the 27th of this month her 100th birthday. And if you'd like to send her a card, the address is in the uh, bulletin. Uh, please take notice. If you've got a bulletin, save the dates. Uh, I'm not going to read all of them. But uh, just remember, it's an important page. So take it home and mark your calendar. 
Mary and I have to mark our calendars. Uh, this coming Tuesday, it, it, it'll be 60 years we've been marking our calendars Amen. together. Uh, praise the Lord. It is a praise. Her mother, her mother said we'd never make it, but we're st I'm still working on it. We're still working. <laughs> I got a frown on that. <laughs> You just, might it on the last <laughs> I, I will. I'll do it. Gratitude for God's grace comes from knowing His grace is not only undeserved favor, but it is merciful favor shown to the one who deserves the exact opposite. May God bless our worship this morning. Pastor Danny has a message. All right. Good morning, church. Good morning. It's good to see everybody on this. Nice, cool morning, but it's nice in here. Amen? Amen? When I came in this morning, it was very, very, very cold in here. And uh, I was so happy to hear that old furnace crank up. So I knew you all would be happy. So God is good. Amen? Um, we truly are uh, grateful for what all God is doing. Um, as Deacon Joe said, there's many dates here. Please remember them all. The next Sunday is the last Sunday that... Um, we're asking that you sign up for the Christmas dinner. We've had a tremendous response for that um, online and in the festival. Uh, I believe we have anywhere from 40 to 50 already coming for the dinner. So that's a great time. I remind you once again, the dinner is free. It's December the 11th at 5 o'clock at St. Mary's Pavilion. We ask you to bring a side and some kind of dessert if you would like. Christmas is all about desserts, so make sure you uh, add to that. The church will provide ham, chicken, and drinks. Amen? So it's uh, no excuse not to come. If you don't have a side, bring a box of Reese Cups. Just put them on the table, and uh, life will be good. Amen? So uh, see, please sign up this week um, so that we know how much food to order and what to uh, do for that. We are having our open house. Again, right after the cantata on December 18th. Everyone is invited. That really is a great time of fellowship. Um, I will take the Lysol and spray from the bottom to the end of the house so you'll be healthy. Don't worry about it. Um, if not, we're all getting sick together anyway. So then we just praise the Lord. But uh, it's really a great time. We haven't been able to fellowship for a couple years. So uh, let's get back into practice. Amen. And be grateful for that. Last announcement. It is that time of year, and it is confusing this year because it's different. So please listen online and everyone here. We are sponsoring two organizations for Christmas. One is CareNet in Frederick, Maryland. We do it, we've done this for the last couple of years. It's families that are um, kids that are uh, struggling and, and uh, moms that are trying to keep their families together. We have 19 families, okay? Mary Yates has the list. If you, the list is very clear uh, and specific, so it's easy to shop for, all right? So if you want to adopt a family at CareNet, you will see Mary and she will give you a list. All these will be due December 11th, okay, here at the church. Also, we have adopted Montevue Assistant Living. That's where Pop is, my father. That's also where Margie Stream is. And it's also another lady there, I can't think of her name right off the moment, but she was part of this church at one time. Um, so we have adopted them. I believe it's 53 uh, seniors. There is three organizations, so please hear me so everybody understands. There's uh, three organizations, one of them being us, that is adopting all 53 exact residents. So on your card that Miss Mary has to give you, it will have one item usually. That's because the other two organizations have picked the other two items. And when they have their party on the 20th, we're gonna, they're going to be able to get three gifts for every resident from all three. Does that make sense? So the reason you don't have five things on your list is because they, they want no one to get four gifts or two gifts. It's three gifts. Now, that being said, they would also like you to add anything you would think the seniors would like. They like crackers. They like Sprite. These are things they cannot get there. They like sugar-free cookies. They like anything homemade. All that's fine, but do not wrap them. 
Does that make sense? The wrapped gifts is so that every resident gets the exact same amount of wrapped gifts. Three gifts. All the things you add to it, just put them in the bag. Okay? Does everybody understand that? That's at Spring Arbor, but we we need to add her. Um, I will I will do that. Very good. Thank you. We could drop one off for her. That absolutely needs to be done. So, uh, um, Mary, if you would write that on the bottom or something, so I don't forget that. Thank you. That very much so. Amen. I can drop it off, or anybody can. Yeah, we can have a big bag or anything. Sure. Yeah, I I, I do too. Um, that's that's she is the only one in that home that's from the church. Uh, the Montevideo I picked because there's three, which is awesome. So let me just go through that again. I'm sorry to take the time, but it's better you understand. Okay. The reason there's one gift is there's two other organizations. Okay. They don't want any person to feel bad because they got four gifts, one gift, two gifts, and that makes sense. So they'll get three wrapped gifts. That means one wrapped gift from you. If it says sweater, there is no names because, you know, all these laws we got to deal with. If it says sweater, think of a senior, medium, okay, something of that nature. Um, you get the one gift, you wrap it. But please add something to this gift, crackers, Sprite, Diet Coke, sugar-free cookies, you know, whatever God lays on your heart. Um, just... Um, stuff and uh we'll drop those off okay and then care net is self-explanatory the the actual family one it has all the suggestions december 11th for everything now online you very much need to be part of this too you can email me you can call mary or you can uh, uh leave a message and mary is that okay if they call your house you can call Mary's house, you can call, text me, and I'll get the message, or you can call Cindy, but the information is going to be funneled back to Mary, okay? Does that make sense? So you're welcome to call me and say, I would like to have three families, this or that, and we will make sure the information gets back to you. I can take a snap and send it right back to you. Uh, there's ways to do that. But all that information needs to be funneled to one person so that we don't mess this up. Amen? Now, all that being said, won't we pray and get back in the spirit of the Lord here, and uh, then we'll get some music going, okay? But we really did need to understand. Um, so after church, Miss Mary will be right here. Make your way up. She'll have the list. She'll have everything. You know, I'm suggesting with the seniors because it's so inexpensive what they're asking for. Some are asking for crackers. Um, take three or four, please, because we have 50, all right? All uh, right. It, it just, it's not a big expense for that. All right, you know what? Let's, let's, let's go to prayer. Lord, thank you for this morning. Thank you that we're able to give to your children. Thank you, Lord. We just want to do our very best when we demonstrate your love and our giving. Lord, bless this time together. Bless everyone online. Bless us all here in person. Thank you for a wonderful Sunday school lesson about applying your word of, of truth, the living word, the Bible. Be with us now. Get our hearts back into an attitude of worship so we can praise you. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Nita, come bring us to worship. Good morning, church family. Good morning. Let everything that pray, breathes praise the Lord. Psalm 156. Let us raise our voices in singing our call to worship, number 640 in your hymnal, Let All Things Now Living.
of God tells us in 1 Chronicles 16, 8, Oh, give thanks to the Lord, call on his name, make known his deeds among the people. And James 1, 17, every generous gift of act of giving with every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. Join me in singing number 636, Come Ye Thankful People, Come. Continue to enter his presence with thanksgiving, Psalm 95, 2. Also, Hebrews 13, 15. Through him, then, let us continually offer a sacrifice of praise to God. That is the fruit of our lips that confess his name. Join me in standing and singing, number 584, Come into his presence. Let us pray. <clears throat> Holy Father, awesome God, it's good to be in your presence. We need to realize when we're your children that your spirit is with us in our walk, in our daily walk. Help us to honor you in this walk. 
that you would be praised and lifted up. Father, we especially pray for the people of Ukraine this morning. Just overshadow them. Father, and we pray that they may live in peace and safety. We pray you'd touch the heart of President Putin, that he would stop the aggression against Ukraine and any other abiding countries. We pray your hand would be upon each of those who are suffering from COVID, especially those in our, in our family this morning. Be with our friends. Be with our seniors, Father. Just overshadow them, comfort them, be with and guide and direct them. And for anyone suffering from cancer, we thank you for your healing touch. And we pray that your hands would be upon our missionaries abroad and here at home as they seek to do your will. Be with our missions here that your hands would be upon Dr. Blankenship as he continues to strive and to help each of the churches in their needs. Bless him and bless all of those in his staff that are working to, to uh, help the churches in all of their needs. Be with Pastor Danny and every pastor that presents your word this morning that you would be honored and praised and lifted up. And we will go out of your house saying it's good to have been in your house. We give you all the thanks and praise. And we pray the prayer now that Jesus, your son, taught us saying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Please join me in responsive reading found in your bulletin and on the wall. Taken from Acts, Luke, 2 Samuel, John, <clears throat> he raised up for them David as king, to whom also he gave testimony and said, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after my own heart, who will do all my will. Father, if it is your will, take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. Now, therefore, thus shall you say to my servant David, thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you from the sheepfold, from, the, from following the sheep to be ruler over my people, over Israel. I am the good shepherd, and I know my sheep, and am known by my own. As the Father knows me, even so I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. So David said to him, Do not fear, for I will surely show you kindness for Jonathan your father's sake. And he cried out, saying, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Then those who went before him said, But he cried out all of the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. And David stayed in the strongholds in the wilderness and remained in the mountains in the wilderness of Ziph. Therefore, Jesus no longer walked openly among the Jews, but went near the wilderness. May the Lord bless his word. You may be seated. Amen. Again, it's good to be in God's house as we come together and sing the praises, have open prayer, and read his word together. Amen. Our Sunday school lesson today was really... Uh, illustrating and driving home the point that we need in a reaction. Um, the Bible, God's Word, and the Old Testament and the New Testament is demonstrated to us and shared with us through the inner reaction of the people. We need in a reaction of each other to be the people God wants us to be. 
So I'm glad and thankful for the word of God that encourages that in everything we do. Again, as we give out these gifts and as we take care of our seniors and the uh, families there at CareNet, it is not so that we can brag. It's not so that we can boast. It's not so that we even feel good about giving. It's about sharing a gift in the name of Jesus Christ to remind everybody that everybody is just as important to the Lord as you and I. Amen. And that we must share the gospel in the hope of love everywhere we go. So God is good in everything we do and we say. So I encourage you to uh, take time this holiday season. Next Sunday's Advent, first Sunday of Advent. Take time. Don't let the hustle and bustle of the day, of the season, of the burdens of the world and all the other things that are going on in our country. Do not ever allow that to rob you from the joy of Jesus Christ and all that we do and celebrate. One person can make a difference in the name of Jesus Christ. That really is going to be our emphasis for next year. I want to tell you that now. If the Lord's willing and I'm still available to preach and still here in January, we're going to talk about how we can make a significant difference one person at a time in the name of Jesus Christ. So please be in prayer for that. As we give our tithes and offering, I want to remind you that you can give through giving online. It's very simple on our website. There's a right-hand corner of the website. You can click giving. You can mail your ifs in. You can see there's many that were mailed this week. They are not open. They're placed in here. If they're marked giving, they're not open. They're placed right in the plate. And also, traditionally, you can give while you're here. God is good. The main thing to remember is to be faithful to God. Amen? Not the Barnesville Baptist Church. Faithful to God in all that we do. So, Ed, come lead us in worship as we come to do our, give our tithes and offerings. Let us pray. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, awesome God, we thank you for this glorious day you've provided for us. We thank you for Barnesville Baptist Church. We thank you for all the people here that attended. We thank those that also are online. We thank you for Pastor Danny and Cindy. We thank you for every good and perfect gift that you've given us. Now, Father, we give back to you a portion of everything you've given us in our tithes and offerings. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Jen. That was lovely. Please rise for our doxology.
Amen. Children, why don't you come on this side today? Come on over. Good morning, everybody. Let me try that again. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. That's right. We're going to learn a new song today. Here it is. This It's called I'm in the Lord's Army. Has anybody ever sang that song already? You might have heard it. Well, it's a really good song. And here's what we're going to do. We're going to talk about being in the Lord's Army. You know, the Lord called us as Christians and also as believers to make a difference in this world. Even at your age, you can make a great difference of bringing joy and happiness to someone's life. You really can. Just like these little gifts you can go that we're buying for the uh, seniors and other families that need it. You could go with, with, with your parents or with whoever, your grandmom or whoever wants to take you. And you can shop and actually help pick it out. And you can know that you're bringing joy to someone's life. Did you understand that? And when you do that, that's showing you that you care. And when you show you care, Jesus says, I will bless you. Just like he blesses all of us. Because Jesus cares about you and I. For God so loved the world, what? That he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believe in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Why? Because of the love and the caring heart and mercy and compassion of Jesus Christ. So being part of the Lord's army doesn't mean always going fighting a big battle. Sometimes in battle, what I mean is uh, evil and, and doing good when other people don't do good to you or, or being nice when people aren't nice to you. That's all being a spiritual battle. But being in the Lord's army, army is also buying a gift for someone you don't even know that you'll probably never meet, but you made them happy because you showed you cared, right? That's what Christmas and really what Jesus wants us to be part about, so the Lord's army. So what we're going to do is we're going to let Miss Jan play it so we can hear it. And then I got a treat for you today. You're going to love it. Okay? Go ahead, Miss Jan. That's your clue. Amen. Ain't that a good song? Okay, everybody, let's stand up. And then we're going to sing it through one time, and then I have a big treat. That's everybody. Uh, I forgot to get the words to Luke, so just sing whatever you think you know. Ready? I may never march in the infantry, ride in the cavalry, shoot the artillery. I may never fly over the enemy, I'm in the Lord's army. I'm in the Lord's army. I'm in the Lord's army. I may never march in the infantry, ride in the cavalry, shoot the artillery. I may never fly over the enemy, but I'm in the Lord's army. All right, stay standing. Your mom, you ready for this? Your mom's going to stand right there or right here or somewhere. Where she'll have to stand right there and do the illustrations, the action motions to this. Now, before you get all embarrassed, guys, I just reminded her. She had one minute to get this together. So, Megan, let's, we're going to sing and you make things happen over there. Anybody wants to join in, kids, join in. Put your songs down. You don't need these. You do the motions with her. You ready? One more time. I may never march in the infantry, ride in the cavalry, shoot the artillery. 
I may never fly over the inner. I'm in the Lord's army. All right, hold it, hold it. We ain't moving. Put the words. I'm going to do it with you. I promise. Put the words down. Ready? All right, at least one of you move. All right, let's go. This is second time through. <laughs> yes, start at the top of once. <laughs> I may never march in the infantry, ride in the cavalry, shoot the artillery. I may never fly o'er the enemy, for I'm in the Lord's army. Ain't you glad that's over, brother? <laughs> All right, you may go. Are, are we doing chill? What are we doing? They going? Go downstairs, guys. If nobody's there, come back. <laughs> Choir, you can make your way. It is good to laugh in God's house. Amen. Enjoy each other. And these songs are songs we all grew up on and uh, with. And, and it brought us to, to be the people we are. I really believe that. This morning, we're going to be blessed again with our choir. And it's so exciting to have our choir back. Uh, so. They're going to sing and bring us to an attitude of worship, and I know that we'll be blessed.
We thank the Lord for our grateful praise. Amen? Amen. Thank you, choir, as they're working very hard <clears throat> to get ready to perform and to share the gospel through a Christmas katata. Uh, Mary, did you know? December 18th. Please mark that down as we uh, worship in music. I do want to give a note of praise and thanks to Nita and also to Gary, um, who sang yesterday two times in the National Christian Choir. And Frederick, um, they sang a beautiful concert uh, twice in the same day. Shock me is still here today. Gary, I guess he's in bed, but that's all right. Maybe he's working today. But uh, they sang twice. They sang in Salisbury last weekend and then this weekend in Frederick twice. The uh, concert was entitled Christmas Carols. Absolutely beautiful. Um, just brought us to... If you had the opportunity to go, you know that it brought you towards the Christmas spirit without any question. They're also are going to be performing in Lancaster, I think, 10th, December 10th. So that's not far away, Lancaster, if you missed it. I will tell you, it's a great concert. Um, it's one of the best ones I have been at with the National Christian Choir because it was all hymns, and that's just my favorite. Amen. Uh, it was a beautiful. So, Nita, thank you. Gary? Thank you. And uh, Ralph, thanks for dinner. Uh, it was a good day all the way around, right? Amen. God is good. Let us pray. Father, I thank you for this morning. Thank you for the opportunity to come and to worship you and to praise you through word, prayer, scripture, music, choir, children, laughter. It's all you, Lord. It's all you. We thank you. We praise you. I pray even now, Holy Spirit, that you will take away all my thoughts, all my uh, opinions, ideas, none of that matters. What matters is you, Lord, your word and what you want spoken today. So, Lord, you have your way this day with me and with your church. I thank you for everyone online. I pray they will be encouraged this day to serve you and everyone here in person as we praise each other to get together today in your glory. And we ask this in your son's name. Amen. Amen. As we approach our last week of the study concerning types of Christ, today's the last week that we'll focus on types of Christ. I want to remind you that the Advent season starts this coming next Sunday. It'll be the first week of Advent. We have looked at types of Christ, the people that reflect Jesus Christ, the people that point towards Jesus Christ in order for us to be prepared better this Christmas season as Advent begins to understand what it means to anticipate and per participate and to be excited about worshiping the Lord Jesus Christ. Our risen Savior, our Lord Jesus Christ. Advent is a special time of year. It's a time when we light the candles that represents hope, peace, joy, and love. It's a time we circle it with a wreath that shows the ever, never-ending love and grace and mercy of Jesus Christ. It's how on Christmas Eve we light the center candle, the Christ candle, because without that candle, there is no reason lighting any of the other candles, amen, because of the Lord Jesus Christ is that source. And we finish up today with King David. I believe the Lord laid that on my heart because that is the line in which we celebrate and remember the most. My prayer is that as we have gone deeper into God's word, that you personally have gone deeper yourself and that you've been blessed by studying the word and that you've been encouraged to apply it to your life, to make it part of who you are, to understand that without the living word living within us, without staying connected to the Lord, without praying, without studying, without interacting with each other, without truly worshiping the Lord with all of your heart, soul, and mind, you will not be prepared for the task the Lord has you completely. It takes being interactive with the Father to be prepared. Today we're going to take a look at King David as a type of Christ. And as we look at our study today, we can see many parallels between the lives of David in the life of Jesus Christ here on earth. One, they were both kings. They were shepherds. Both were born in Bethlehem. Both were appointed by the Father. Both conquered giants. But most importantly than anything else, both were faithful to the Father, Jehovah. 
in all things. But again, we must always remember that these men like David, Moses, Adam, Abel, all these ones, Noah, that we have looked at, they were just sinful men saved by the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. They were sent here to point towards Jesus Christ, to reflect the goodness of Jesus Christ, to let us see through their lives what the Lord Jesus Christ expects from us. Just like in Sunday school today, we were encouraged to look at the Old Testament and the New Testament and the people of the Old Testament, the people of the New Testament, so that we can learn how to interact with the Father and learn from their mistakes, learn from their victories, learn from their blessings, learn from this, their disobedience, and be the people that God wants us to be today. Amen, church? That's why we must look at the Word and continue to stay in it. We need to be used by God and prepared to be used by God to bring honor to God. One of my prayers as we have studied these types of Christ is that it has helped you in your growth, your love, and your knowledge of the only true Lord, Jesus Christ. Again, I, I don't want to keep mentioning in Sunday school, but today I was excited about our lesson. I am every day, but today just really hit home about how we read in Nehemiah, how the word was read to everyone who understood. We did not, they did not pick and choose the age, the sex. It wasn't just men. It wasn't just women. It wasn't just children. The word was read to anyone who came who would understand. The word of God is applied. When we read it, it is not our job to pick and choose who hears it. It's not our job to pick and choose who we present it to. It's our job to present that word, to live that word, to reflect that word, and allow the Holy Spirit to touch the person who hears it because the understanding comes from the Holy Spirit. Can I get an amen? The teaching comes from the guidance of the Spirit. The understanding comes from the Holy Spirit. And the Word comes from the Father. And Jesus is the Word. Kind of sums it all up. We are not to pick and choose what, when, and how. We're just simply to be obedient. And my prayer is as we looked at all these people that we study, that we realize that we're not the most important thing at Barnesville Baptist Church. None of us. We're not the one holding it together. We're not the one sustained it. We're not the one that started it. We're not the one that finished it. It's God's house, God's people, God's word, and we are chosen as a gift to be the people here today to reflect the goodness of Jesus Christ, to share it, to live it. Now, that gives us a responsibility. Don't hear me wrong. We are to be the people that... The members, the attenders, the guests, the visitors, whatever it is that we are, we are to strive to be the best we can so we can make a difference in the name of Jesus Christ. But it's the word of God that will penetrate the soul. It's the word of God that gives us the motivation to stay moving forward. My prayer is that this is, study has given you a renewed spirit to go deeper a renewed spirit to be more of who God wants you to be. I want to share something exciting news with you. Some of you, I shared this with you, but as a church body, I want to share with you today that because of this study and because of other things in my life, God has put a renewed spirit in for me to learn more and to go deeper into God's word. So I have enrolled in the Southeastern Baptist Theological Seminary, and I was accepted. That was shock number one. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, I was accepted. My, my uh, courses began in January. I will be taking two years more of seminary training. Why? Because I want to be the best pastor that God let, wants me to be. I want to be the best, present the gospel in the greatest way. And the way God gave me the ability. I don't talk like all people. I don't speak like all people. I sure don't. Uh, I sure don't enunciate the words like most people, but I know one thing. If I strive to be the best I can be, God will bless that. If you strive to be the best God will be, you, God will bless you. So pray for me. For the next two years, I will be going to courses to continue my degree um, and continue my training. And uh, to be honest with you, I'm glad of that because God has put a renewed spirit in me to uh, to go deeper in God's word. So uh, I just ask for prayers, but it's also praise. So let's go deeper and look at David. 1 Samuel 16, verses 10 through 13. 
Jesse had seven of his sons pass before Samuel. Remember, Samuel was sent to, to anoint the king, to find the king by the father. But Samuel said to him, the Lord has not chosen these. So he asked Jesse, are these all the sons you have? They're still the youngest, Je Jesse answered. He is tending the sheep. Samuel said, send him, send for him. We will not sit down until he arrives. So he sent for him and he had him brought in. He was glowing with health and had a fine appearance and a handsome features. Then the Lord said, rise and anoint him, for this is the one. So Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And from that day on, the spirit of the Lord, remember the spirit's the one that moves. The spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon David. Samuel then went to Ramah. David was ordained. He wasn't chosen by Samuel, amen? He was chosen by God. He was chosen to be the man God wanted in his time and his place to be king. Now, I want to tell you right now, I'm going to read some powerful verses that just brought tears and joy to my heart. And you want to know a description of our King Jesus Christ? Look up Revelations 19, 5 through 16. Please read along with me and let this word of God stir your heart like never before. Revelations 19. And then a voice came from the throne saying, Praise our God, all you his servants, you who fear him, both great and small. Then I heard what sounded like a great multitude, then the roar of rushing waters and like loud peals of thunder shouting, Hallelujah, for our Lord God Almighty reigns. Let us rejoice and be glad. Give him glory for the wedding of the lamb has come and his bride has made himself ready. Fine linen, bright and clean, was given her to wear. Fine linen stands for the righteous acts of God's holy people. Then the angel said to me, write this, blessed are those who are invited to the wedding supper of the lamb. And he added, these are the true words of God. At this, I fell at his feet to worship him. But he said to me, don't do that. I am a fellow servant with you and for your brothers and sisters who hold to the testimony of Jesus. Worship God, for it is the spirit of prophecy who bears testimony to Jesus. I saw heaven standing open, and there before me was a white horse whose rider is called Faithful and True. With justice he judges and wages war. His eyes are like blazing fire, and on his head are many crowns. He has a name written on him that no one knows but himself. He is dressed and a robe dipped in blood, and his name is the word of God. The armies of heaven were following him, riding on white horses and dressed in fine linen, white and clean, coming out of his mouth as a sharp sword with a, which to strike down the nations. He will rule them with an iron scepter. He treads the winepress of the fury of the wrath of God Almighty, and on his robe and on his thigh he has this name written, King of kings and Lord of lords. Can I get an amen? That's some powerful scripture describing our Savior. King of kings, Lord of lords, and he's coming for you and I. David in all of his splendor, Solomon, Moses, Abraham, all these ones we looked at, they could never reflect the goodness that our Savior can, who's on his robe is written, King of kings and Lord of lords. There is again only one Jesus Christ. There's only one Savior. There's only one to reflect on. There's only one to point to. There's only one that we should give our honor to. There's only one we should give our obedience to, our allegiance to, and that's to the Lord Jesus Christ. We are to appreciate each other. That's exactly what the Lord tells us to do. We are to appreciate each other, pray for each other, encourage each other. But church, listen to me, we should never worship anything except the Lord Jesus Christ. There's nothing that should ever go ahead of us in the Lord Jesus Christ. That includes your tender here, your tithes, your mercy, your grace, your position as a pastor or anything else. None of that matters. What did it say right here? I went to fall on his feet and he said, get up. I am a fellow servant of the Lord Jesus Christ. Pretty clear to me that there's only one to worship. Amen. There's only one to give all the praise. It's only one to be obedient to. But that obedience means we give our all. Amen? And don't ever forget, when Jesus says give your all, he did it first. Amen? He gave all. He's not asking for you to do anything he didn't do, and we can never do what he did anyway. But we sure can represent that. Let's move on. I, I really love this study. I could preach this study all year long. 
David and Jesse were shepherds. Jesse. <laughs> David and Jesus were both shepherds. 1 Samuel 16, 11, we read. So he asked Jesse, are these all the sons you have? He says, what, they're still the youngest. Jesse answered, he is tending the sheep. We know he was a shepherd. How about Jesus? Psalms 23. I love this psalm. I don't know why we only read it when we have a funeral. We should read it every day. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me besides quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right path for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they will comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. That's a psalm that brings peace and joy and comfort to our souls. That's why I asked again. I, my prayer is that this study really has created an appetite for you and everyone online to go deeper in your own personal study so that we can all be everything God longs for us to be. I never thought in a million years I'd ever go back to seminary. I never thought I would go the first time. I figured once I walked across that stage and that man handed me the plan, I'd never see the man again. Amen. Then again, I won't because I ain't going back to that school. I'm going to a different one. But the point is this. I never thought I'd ever have to worry about it. Check that box. Amen. That, that's done. But I truly have a desire, a desire to be all that God wants me to be. And if I'm not, and I, I'm not saying this to brag, I'm saying this because you all know me very well, and a lot of you online know me even better. For me to go back and commit to two more years of studying and reading and writing papers and all the things it takes involved to start over and, and to go deeper in my education, that had to come from God. Because that's not who I am. But that's who God wants me to be. And God wants me to be everything he wants me to be. Now, your task might be totally different. All I'm trying to say is this. Whatever it is he's laid on your heart, just say yes. I'm going to tell you now as your pastor, it's a whole lot easier if you just say yes. Because eventually you're going to say yes, 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 I'll do it. Kind of like my wife. You can say, uh, all right, all right. It's much easier if you just get up and do it. Amen. That daggone trash, Brother Joe. Can you empty the trash? Yeah, I'll get it. Can you empty the trash? Yeah, I'll get it. And next you know she's walking out the trash. It's way too late to get it then. Even if you get up, she ain't giving it to you. Amen? That's a dumb illustration. But the bottom line is this. The bottom line is when the Lord says, I want you to do this, we really should simply say, yes, sir. Yes, Lord. Because it's only going to better you. It's only going to make you a better Christian, a stronger faith. It's only going to prepare you for whatever God has for you next. It's only going to prepare you to be better equipped. I really believe the year 2023 is going to be a rough year for the church of God right here in this beautiful country. I believe this country is going to go through a very tough year. I'm not talking about politics. I'm talking about the world itself. I believe there's going to be more disasters and more trouble, and I'm not gloom and doom. You know that's opposite of who I am. What I'm telling you all that for is the Lord has laid on my heart as your shepherd to lay on your heart. We got to be prepared because one person can make a difference. One person can make a difference. One person. And that person's you. And that person's me. We need to be prepared. Um, I don't know if I read about Jesus, but let's read. Matthew 2, 1. Now David was the son of Ephronite named Jesse, who was from Bethlehem in Judah. Jesse had eight sons in Saul's time. He was very old. That's the wrong verse, but that's okay. Now, David was the son of, they're both the same. Jesus was a shepherd, folks, the good shepherd. And uh, we just praise the Lord for that. Let's move on. Um, they both 
defeated giants. 1 Samuel 17, 50, 51. So David triumphed over the Philistine with a sling and a stone. Without a sword in his hand, he struck that Philistine and killed him. David ran and stood over him. He took hold of the Philistine's sword and drew it from his sheep. After he killed him, he cut off his head with the sword. When the Philistines saw that he, when the Philistines saw that their hero was dead, they turned and ran. Amen. David defeated the giant. Now let's look at our King Jesus. Colossians 2, 10 through 15. And in Christ, you have been brought to fulfillness, fullness. He is the head over every power and authority. So it really doesn't matter what happens this year, does it? Jesus is the head over all heads and all authority. In him, you were also circumcised with a circumcision not performed by human hands. Your whole self ruled by the flesh was put off when you were circumcised by Christ, having been buried with him in baptism, in which you were also raised with him through faith in the working of God, who raised him from the dead. When you were dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made you alive with Christ. He forgave us all our sins, having canceled the charge of our legal indebtedness, which stood against us and condemned us. He has taken away he has taken it away, nailing it to the cross. And having disarmed the powers and authorities, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them by the cross. Can I get an amen? amen. Jesus defeated the greatest giant we'll ever face, Satan himself. So to sum this up, we are to reflect the goodness of Jesus in everything we do. If they were to write a story or a book about us, would it show Jesus in our lives? Would it show our failures? I hope it does, because then it would show our victories. Amen? Would it show our mistakes? I hope it does, because then it would show the forgiveness and grace of Jesus Christ. Would it show our obedience? I hope it does, because then it would show that we conquered our disobedience. Do you get the theme? I hope it shows in reality an absolute perfect example of who we are, because at the end, I hope we can raise our hands, every one of us, and say, besides everything that's written in this book, I am a child of Jesus Christ. I have was used by the Lord, and I did all I could, and I gave all I could. That's my prayer for all of us, that we gave and did all that we could. Never let anything hinder you from being the people God wants you to be or the people or the person that God wants me to be. Never allow anything to hinder you. Never allow anyone to say no. Never allow any Satan to put any doubt or hardship or troubles in your way. If the Lord says does it, he's already, if the Lord says to do it, he's already opened the door to get it done. Amen? When I started this journey about three weeks ago or more, to get into seminary to try to do it by January. I went back to my original Southern Seminary and they didn't have the online programs. I, I do like the fact of seven seminaries, right? I think total, five, is it five? Um, that Southern Baptist, uh, um, I guess I own. Um, they basically all have different things. They all offer the exact same thing as far as training and all that. But they offer different things for online and different programs for lay people and all. That's better than one trying to do it all. Amen. So I could have easily stopped and said, well, Southern didn't have it. I had so much for that. I went on to Moody. They were way too expensive. So I went on to something else. Our, our cooperative giving, just so you know, as a cooperative giving church to the Southern Baptist Convention, I want to share this with you because it's very important. Our Annie Armstrong offering at Lottie Moon. Annie, which one's Christmas? Lottie. Lottie. I knew it wasn't Annie. That's Easter. Our, our offerings, they go to missionaries, but our every month we give cooperative program money to the Southern Baptist Convention, which goes to the seminaries. I want to share with you, I'm able to take this two-year course as a pastor of a cooperative active program, giving to the cooperative program of an active church as a pastor, and all that's verified for $692 a year. That is all. Because our tithes pays the rest. $692 for all the courses for each year. That's not even a fraction. Doesn't count the books, but that's life. Amen? You Think about it. If it was full-fledged tuition, you'd have loans and everything to burn you down. The Lord takes all that away. 
And so when I'm looking at all this and when I'm thinking of the excuses, why not? The money was gone, taken away. That issue is gone. That burden has gone. They, rep they had the, the program I was looking for. I was accepted. There comes a point where you can't say anything but yes, sir. Thank you, Lord. And he'll do the exact same thing for you. You and I are no different. Whatever God calls you to do, he'll equip and open the door to get it done. Just be faithful. Now remind me of that in about six months and I'm like, what am I doing here? <laughs> Amen? God is good. Let's finish this up. Both David and Jesus were persecuted by their enemies. Both David and Jesus showed mercy towards their enemies. Both David and Jesus showed compassion towards their enemies. But only Jesus was fully man and fully God. Only Jesus could forgive us of our sins. And only Jesus could heal the ones that were persecuting him. Only Jesus was found to have no sin in his life. And I want to close with this last statement. And only the Lord Jesus Christ heard these words from Jehovah God Almighty. Matthew 17, 5. While he was still speaking, a bright cloud covered them, and a voice from the cloud said, This is my son, whom I love. With him I am well pleased. Listen to him. Let's close out this study by saying three powerful little words. Listen to Jesus. Listen to your leaders, your teachers, your Sunday school leaders, your pastor. Back every word that's ever set up by the word of God. Back it up with prayer. Let the Holy Spirit affirm it in your heart. But always listen to Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Father, I thank you for this morning. I thank you for this study as we saw so many that gave their lives to you. And you did great and mighty works to bring glory to the Father and to you, Lord. I pray that you will use us as your church here at Barnesville, everyone online and everyone in person, to bring honor and glory to you and to you alone. Not to us, not to any individual, not to any individual family, but to you and to you alone, Lord God Almighty. May the praise and the honor always be bestowed. May everything we do, everything we do, bring to bring honor and glory to you. Lord, I pray we do nothing that doesn't. Lord, thank us, bless us during this Thanksgiving season. Remind us of how good we have it. Bless us during this Christmas season, this Advent season. And may you use us to bring joy to some residents at Mount of View and some families at CareNet. And anywhere else we find ourselves, may we shed the good joy of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. And all God's people said, Amen. If you don't know Jesus Christ today, do not leave here today without coming and speaking and reaching out. I can't save you, but I can introduce you to the one that can. We can hold each other's hand and pray to the Lord Jesus Christ, and your life will be changed forever. Online, reach out. If you don't know where you stand with the Lord, email me, pastordanatlive.com. Absolutely private email. No one reads that. Text me. Reach out in any way you can to be the God, people God wants you to be. Today in Sunday school, Megan shared with us two little pictures that were drawn. We wonder sometimes, what do our children comprehend? Is it okay? I, I'm thinking you better check. <laughs> now I can tell the story. We were talking about we never know what Mom with Alzheimer's understands? We don't know that. Someone in a coma, you don't know what they understand. A child, anyone else that walks through here, it's not our job to know, it's our job to share. Let's never forget that. It's our job to teach. It's our job to be presented. During the concert with Charles and Bern Bernadette, they sang last night too, beautiful, thanks. Alina was drawing on a program. So mommy, being a good mommy, looked to see if she was paying attention and what she was drawing for, just like Cindy does me now, amen? One of the songs was about sunshine, clouds, things of that nature. 
So she drew a cloud and a great big sun. Mom was about that about a savior. She drew a picture of a savior. She was baptized a couple weeks ago. Let's just teach. Let the Holy Spirit do the rest. Amen. Come lead us. And number 582. Thank you, Lord. Before Joe comes and dismisses us, let me once again very quickly tell you about Mary standing here. She has over 50 names for Montague Assistant Living Seniors. You can literally take three or four or five. They're not expensive what they're asking for. It's one gift. Add anything you want in there that you would want sitting in a room by yourself. Crackers, snacks, soda, things they cannot get from the assistant living itself. Anything of goodies, snacks, or anything you would God lays on your heart. There's families from CareNet. It's all due December 11th. Online, just call. The easiest thing to do would be text, call, and we'll get the information, and I'll take a picture and send it to you. It's all due December 11th. Um, do what you can, because it's one of the greatest things we do as a church body. Amen? At Christmas time. Sorry, Jim. Let us pray. Holy Father, we thank you for your word. We heard this morning the truth. We thank you for the privilege of being able to share our wealth with others who, who do not have it or can't get it. We ask that your hands would be about the elderly, comfort them and overshadow them, and help us to honor you with our daily walk, that we might praise you and give you all the thanks. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs>